Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Unity Center of Light. We are pleased to be here with you this morning. We have a special treat for you today. Unity Center of Light is a spiritual community that nurtures the potential of those who wish to develop their spirit, mind, and body. And we couldn't have a better person to help us to affirm and claim that today. You'll hear a little bit more about Laura Barrett Bennett in a couple of moments before she starts her talk, but I just wanted to say in advance that we give thanks for the good we know that'll be shared today, the illumination and the expansion of consciousness. So thank you, Laura, for being willing to be with us today. Okay, so I'm going to um, share a screen with you this morning and we're going to affirm together our mission and our foundation statements. So please join me on your end to affirm the mission of Unity as Center of Light is to empower individuals to express their indwelling divine potential. We teach there is a power within each of us far greater than anything that exists outside of us. Amen. And our foundation statement, there is only one power and one presence active in my life and affairs, God, the good, omnipotent. And so it is. So I'd like to take this moment to invite Bonnie Sermons to share with us the daily word today. Good Sunday morning, Unity family. And today the daily word is taken from realize. I realize the power of spiritual truth. I have had many a aha moment throughout my life when something that had befuddled me for years suddenly became clear. It may have been something I tried to learn in school a skill I practiced and tried to master as I grew, or even an idea that challenged my understanding of the world around me. Whenever I realized something new, I could feel my world expanding, opening up before me in fresh and exciting ways, making me eager to discover even more. On my spiritual journey, I feel a similar excitement as I realize I have so much more than a spark of divinity within me. I am fully divine, just as I am fully human. I feel newly alive in this realization and so very grateful for it. And the scripture from today is taken from Genesis 28, 16. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, surely the Lord is in this place and I did not know it. Okay, well, thank you, Bonnie, for sharing that uh, daily word with us today. So it is um, interesting, uh, if any of you were on with us before um, the session started, um, you, will, uh, you would have heard Debbie and Colette and Patty and I all talking about having had Laura at different points in time. She's a third generation unity minister. She has blessed many people with her teachings and her lessons and her voice. Um, she has some wonderful things planned for us today to celebrate our invincible spirit. And um, just please join me in giving her a really wonderful welcome. Laura, take it away. It's all yours. All right, can you all hear me? Thumbs up. Good, good. Oh gosh. First of all, thank you, April. Thank you, each of you. And it's so good to see um, uh, 
fellow class participants from from the past and and uh, licensed unity teachers now awesome awesome um someone i'll be sharing about today is my my grandmother who was a licensed unity teacher back in the 50s and and became a minister and uh started the unity work in fairfax virginia the first unity church in Virginia. She came out of the Washington DC center uh, where she worked in the White House uh, for, for uh, quite a number of years. Um, and uh, anyway, and, but she, she moved into ministry uh, in her, in her uh, later, in the later part of what was her life. Um, and I grew up in immersed in these teachings. Uh, my father was a minister. My grandmother was my mother's mother. Uh, my father's mother um, helped uh, Ernest Wilson start the Youth of Unity uh, as, as an organization out in Kansas City. And um, anyway, so, so I, I have been uh, weaned <laughs> on, on the Unity teachings. Uh, the first, the first one I remember, I, and I remember this from my very young childhood at my grandmother's church in Fairfax on, on Main Street in Fairfax, um, a little, a small church. And I remember walking around the grounds afterwards and affirming what they were teaching us in the Sunday school. I am God's perfect child. I am God's perfect child. Imagine growing up with that. Imagine that, you know, uh, imagine when you're, when you're a young child being told you are God's perfect and beloved child uh, and uh, what, that, what that can do in you and in your life. It doesn't mean you're walking into a life free of challenges. It doesn't mean you're walking into a life that will have no problems. It doesn't mean you won't ever be human enough to get angry or upset or forget who you are. But, but it does mean that underneath it all is a foundation, and it's one that we can all claim, a foundation of an invincible spirit, that no matter what happens, no matter what, you know that underneath is the grace that blesses us all. And it comes from that source that is within us. Uh, and uh, my grandmother knew that, even in her greatest challenges. Uh, my grandmother passed away uh, when she was two years younger than I am now. Uh, she passed away of ovarian cancer. She died of ovarian cancer back in 1970. And, uh, and a few months before her transition, after she had been diagnosed uh, and was going and was starting treatments, um, she did a talk in her ministry called The Good Fight, uh, it was based on, on the scripture from first Tim, or second Timothy. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. And, and for her, what a good fight was, was not a fight. It was not a fight. It was the ability to stand strong, to be strong in spirit, to, to rely on that part of us that is invincible, that is greater than anything we know. And the way to do that is really to recognize that we are that. We are that. And that whatever it is we go through in life, it is all part of our evolutionary process. And that's what I'm going to talk about today is our evolutionary process. Even the past year and a half through the loss, through the, and I know, I know um, uh, we, we all have something to grieve. Uh, I lost some of my dearest friends uh, during the past year and a half, uh, one or two from COVID and, um, and one or two from other causes. Uh, and uh, anyway, what even through loss and, and through our own challenges and struggles, uh, we know, we know as, as a spiritual, how, how about that? I, I prefer the term peacemaker to warrior, but as a spiritual, strong, strong person, a person of spiritual power and strength, uh, we know that underneath 
is our invincible spirit carrying us through. Uh, this, this talk that my grandmother gave, I'm aware of it because I have a whole file of her old talks. And, and here is, she, she typed every single one of them out, word for word. And, and uh, this one is from February 1969, February 2nd, 1969. And she opens it with things that I'm sure we've been asking ourselves lately. She says, how many times have I heard it said? How many times you have heard it said? Perhaps we ourselves have said it. I don't know why life has to be such a struggle. I don't know why. Just as soon as I make one overcoming, there's something else that has to be overcome. Why do we have to labor so hard to continue to do what we know we should do? And she even mentioned how Unity Truth students are particularly hard on themselves in this. She said, one said to her, ever since I've been in truth, it seems I have more overcomings to make. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, so, so there was this questioning of why life is such a struggle. And it's all seen in, our, in the evolutionary unfolding of who we really are. And that is what I am sharing with you today. I have a PowerPoint to do that. So I'm going to go to my PowerPoint now. If you give me a few seconds to uh, get the program up and going. Let me see. There it is. And uh, get the, um, all right. Ah, I have something in, hold on. I have something in the way of my, I just have to do this for a second and then I'll get the whole screen on. All right. Uh, yep, from the beginning. There we go. Now, can everyone see that? Another thumbs up. Yeah, okay, good. Good, invincible spirit, our evolutionary journey. Remember, whatever is happening out here, we have that spirit within us. And uh, that is our primary, primary point today. But why, How, why, why do we have these struggles? Why do we go through what we go through in life? And I'm hoping that this can help address some of that. Um, and if you have ever taken Journey of Joy, the workshop Journey of Joy with me, or the class Spiritual Journey Evolving Soul, you might remember that somewhere in the distant past, some of these points I'll be making. But uh, let us begin uh, our journey by beginning with the meaning of invincible. It's from the Latin vincere, meaning to conquer. To conquer, invincible simply means unconquerable. There is nothing, and I mean no thing, in all the universe that can keep us down as spiritual beings. Nothing. No matter how long, or no matter how many months we have to wash our hands and wear masks, no matter how long, no matter what the loss, there is within us an unconquerable, invincible spirit. From the online dictionary, I love this phrasing, too powerful to be defeated or overcome. And isn't that spirit within us too powerful to be defeated or overcome? And we are going to look at the journey from the perspective of the Bible. Now, because April said you all like the Bible, I'm doing a Bible talk today. I'm taking us from Genesis through Revelation. Now, don't worry. I'm not going to talk about every single book. <laughs> but I'm taking us on highlights, on a highlighted journey from Genesis to Revelation. Uh, and, uh, and this is why. Charles Fillmore said it. He said, the Bible is the history of man. We now know as human beings. You know, Charles Fillmore wrote in that patriarchal language in the early 20th century. The Bible is the history of man. In its 66 books, it describes in allegory, prophecy, epistle, parable, and poem, man or humanity's generation, 
degeneration and regeneration. It has been preserved and prized. Yeah, it has been preserved and prized beyond all other books because it teaches man or each of us how to develop the highest principle of our being. Okay, one of the thoughts that just occurred to me when we get to our when we get to our fellowship discussion, I do have a couple of lead in questions, but if you have any questions about what I am saying today, let's let's talk about them. Okay. The Bible itself. Uh, from from my book, The Language of God, Metagetics and the Bible, and I didn't put one within reach. There's one over there in the living room. But from my book, uh, it is available on Amazon. And uh, by the end of the year, I will have a new edition of it uh, complete with a workbook so it can be taught in different churches. Uh, the Bible. There is no human experience, no news event, no drama, no, no comedy, no popular form of entertainment, scandal, heroism, or pure ecstatic inspiration that is not reflected and maybe even rooted in the Bible. So, so the Bible is so great for our spiritual path, not because it is all nice and good and sweet sounding, but because it does encompass the entirety of the human experience and the entirety of humanity's experience. All right. Therefore, by becoming to know and understand the by coming to know and understand the Bible from the place of divine love, joy, and wisdom, you come to know and understand yourself and all of humanity from that same place. In this state of awareness, God is present in all people, in all things, and as all possibility. Okay. So here's our journey. Think we can do it in about 10 minutes? Illumination, individualization, separation, inspiration, chemicalization. Oh, I have a colon next to chemicalization. Integration, realization. All right. These are the seven phases of the soul's journey. Now, what is the soul's journey? It is both the, how can I call it? The macro journey that we're on from the, from the first initial awareness and consciousness of our being. To, to that point in eternity where we once again merge with all of it. It is that macro journey, but it is also the micro journeys we go through when we first awaken to something and then, and then take it on individually and then feel the struggle of separation with it and have our moments of inspiration and, and, and commit ourselves from that inspiration and out of that commitment, comes a, a, a challenge, a chemicalization to clean up in us whatever needs cleaning up. And then we integrate through love and we realize, remember today's daily word is realize, realization. We realize the truth, okay. So we begin with illumination in Genesis 1, 1 through 3. Who doesn't begin in the beginning? with Genesis 1, 1 through 3. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there, <clears throat> let there be light. And guess what? There was light. This is, hmm, this is the initial awakening. It's like coming out of meditation before the personal thoughts start flooding the mind, it's like coming out of a long meditation when the mind is still and there is just simple awareness, consciousness awakening. And we go through this, to, again, we go through a macro cycle, our soul is going through a macro cycle of this or a macro journey of this. <clears throat> and we go through our micro journeys, our cycles of these things. Then we come into individualization. Now this takes place 
in the seven days of creation, each one representing a different aspect of being that's being created, a different aspect of consciousness. But phase one culminates. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. One of the interesting things to note here is that the six days with the seventh day of rest, uh, that pattern of creation is the same pattern that you find in the ancient Babylonian myth of creation. Um, the gods, the gods, the, there are six generations of gods, each representing the very things that are created in the act of creation in Genesis. There are six generations of gods created, and then humankind is created. But here's the difference. Humankind is created on that sixth day, not as the image and likeness of God, but as the servant of God, as, 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 as subservient. But in our own uh, book of Genesis, we are created in the image and after the likeness of the divine. We are the offspring, not the servant. We are the offspring. Uh, we are, not, not just do we, do we, are we born out of the invincible spirit? We are the invincible spirit in expression. And our awareness is I am. Individualization phase two is when we take form, when we take on all of those personal ideas and concepts and thoughts about who we are, the training, the formation of us, both as we grow in this lifetime, both as we are reforming, as we learn new experiences and our soul's journey as a whole. Then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. <laughs> Interesting. And the man became a living being. Our awareness is I am that. I am that. I am saying I am that I am, but I am that. Uh, and and we, we recognize that we are a living being, an individualized living being. And if we, are, if we are experiencing this in a, in a cycle in life, we individualize our experience at this point. Then comes the separation. Then the Lord God said, see, the man has become like one of us, knowing good and evil, and now he might reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. He drove out the man and at the east of the garden of Eden, he placed the cherubim and a sword flaming and turning to guard the way to the tree of life. Okay. Now, an interesting thing here is that this is our consciousness of duality and separation that starts setting in. When we recognize our distinction as an individual, the first thing we notice are other people's distinctions. But then we start wrapping these ideas and concepts as we have unpleasant experiences around them. We start wrapping these ideas and what we call judgments, not the power, not the spiritual power, but what we call our judgments, our, our opinions about things that wrap around people and separate us from them. And we get into this us and them or me, you know, uh, me, you know, it's me and you against the world. Um, we get into this kind of thinking, this, do, this good and evil. We've eaten of the fruit of, of, of the knowledge of good and evil. Notice it's not the fruit of good and evil. It's the knowledge of good and evil that actually affects us. It's the knowledge. It is not a thing. It is not a thing that exists, good and evil. It is, not, it is our, in our awareness, in our thinking. Even in the Old Testament or the Hebrew scriptures, uh, it, it, said, you know, it, it points out that um, there, there are no evil people. There are no evil people. Even with the worst behavior, there are no evil people. 
it's always when there is a king who did evil that's what it says he did the what was evil in the sight of the lord it doesn't say he was an evil king he did what was evil it's in our behavior it's in our thinking it's at that level not at the level of being because at the level of being we are invincible spirit but we cannot exist and so so our way of thinking is i am not that but we cannot exist forever with that that's why we don't have access to the tree of life the tree of life as charles fillmore points out is the eternal omnipresent life of god that is within us it's our awareness of that eternal life and we cannot give eternal life to a dualistic separating way of thinking to a divisive way of thinking it it's not that it doesn't exist it just cannot last it simply cannot last Eternal life cannot be experienced from the consciousness of separation and duality. This tree of life, by the way, is in the country where I lived for two years. It's in the small little island country um, in what we know as the Persian Gulf. It was called the Arabian Gulf uh, in, in Bahrain, but it was Bahrain, the country of Bahrain. And the tree of life, uh, was I think it was a mesquite tree. It's more than 400 years old. Mesquites never lived past about 150 years old. And it, it, it's, a, it's a miracle because you may notice nothing is growing in this part of the desert in Bahrain. Nothing grows around there except this tree. This tree grows. And why does this one tree grow? Because it has one root that made its way all the way down to the fresh water source that underlies the island of Bahrain. Bahrain literally means, you may recognize the last phrase or the last syllable, rain. <laughs> it's an Arabic-based uh, word. Bahrain means two waters, two waters. And it refers to the salt water that surrounds the island and the fresh water that runs underneath. So they have their miraculous tree of life. We cannot live eternally in dualistic consciousness. Then we move into inspiration. Inspiration. God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. This is my name forever. And this is my title for all generations whether it's a tree of life in the middle of the desert or a burning bush on a mountain or someone who said something or something in our lives, we always are given our points of inspiration in which we remember who we are. I am who I am. This is a way to get your inspiration. We were talking about taking walks earlier, take a walk and or find a quiet place in your own way, dedicating, consecrate yourself wholly to the will and the work of the spirit of God by whatever name you give it. On those morning walks that I take, I pause, I look at the sunrise and I say, I dedicate myself to the will and the work of the Christ. I say that every morning. Awareness, I am willing, I dedicate myself to the will and the work of that invincible spirit within me. I will be who I will be is another translation directly from the Hebrew Yahweh, which is I am who I am, so the, the, the word. I am, it, it means I am who I am and I will be who I will be. I am willing. Chemicalization. Ah, now, once you recognize who you are and you commit yourself to being that in the world, does everything just automatically, magically unfold perfectly before you? No obstacles, no nothing, no anything to ever worry about ever again because you have, you are there, you have reached it. Well, not exactly. Uh, the pattern that shows up in the Bible, because it's our human pattern, is that once we commit ourselves to something, everything that stands in the way of it will come to the surface for one reason and one reason only, to be healed. 
I am the true vine and my father is the vine grower from the gospel of John. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. And don't worry, I'm watching the time there. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. So raise your hand if at this point in your life you have ever been pruned. Anyone? And I don't mean a good soak in the tub either. Yep. There you go. Yeah. If you've ever been pruned, know that it is not because you're a bad person. It is not because there's something wrong with you. Listen to this. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes. It is because you are bearing fruit. It is because you have committed to the greatness that you and others are, that we have these experiences. Imagine this is going on on the whole human scale. Imagine the pruning <laughs> of the last year and a half that we have all been through. Awareness, I am growing, I am growing, I am, I am expanding into new branches, new fruit. Who has, obtained new fruit from the past year and a half of some kind. Yeah. Yeah. All right, growing in power through chemicalization. Uh, my grandmother brought this out in her talk where, where uh, it says in 2 Corinthians where Paul said, he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you for power is made perfect in weakness. What? Invincible spirit, we're strong, we're powerful. Power is made perfect in weakness. And here's what my grandmother said about that. What he's saying here is that when we overcome a weakness, we realize how strong we are. That if we did not have a weakness to test our strength, to cause us to call upon the rock that is stronger than we know ourselves to be, would we grow? Would we grow? If we were not pruned, would we bear new fruit? So that is the contemplation and the conclusion my grandmother came to that she, is, she used her experience right to her transition out of her body. She used her experience to grow in the strength of who she is. So there's a transformational Affirmation, some of you may have heard this one from me. Okay, it, we can memorize it. You ready to memorize it? A transformational affirmation that will help every time you feel like you're being pruned and, you're, and your stuff is thrown into the fire and you're burning with anger, upset, frustration. Okay, here it is. Burn, baby, burn. Let it burn. Let the, let the wave of energy move through. Don't blast it at anybody, but find a, a way to, to get it out. Take that walk, do those dishes, whatever it is. It gets that energy out. Let it burn itself off until you find that center again. And integration. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal flowing from the throne of God and of the lamb through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit. Whoops, that's realization. I, went, I skipped to realization. There we go, integration. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love just as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. I've said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. It is love that is the integrating power. Love. If we are upset with somebody or something, we can still call forth love, forgiveness, compassion, especially with ourselves. Our awareness, I am loving, or I am love in action. And finally, that slides us right into realization, where we once again, if you look at this scripture, have access 
to the tree of life. On either side of the river is the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. So when we love and put love into action, the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nation. So here is our journey. Illumination, consciousness, awaken, individualization. I am and I am that. Separation, I am not that. Inspiration, I am who I am. I am willing. Chemicalization, I am growing. Integration, I am loving. Realization, I am whole and complete. The summary message, remember who you are. Remember who others are. Bring love into action when and where you can and know I am whole and complete. I am invincible. And on that note, we will have just a few moments of meditation and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. When you become love in action, what you do heals, not just your family, not just your community, but the whole world. Okay. So we will now have a meditation. And to bring us into meditation, I'm going to play a melody that we'll be singing in a little bit. Um, and I'm going to do it on my Navajo flute here. There we go. All right. And uh, so I hope this comes across well enough for you. Okay, so let's take a deep breath before I play the flute. Let's take a deep breath, close our eyes. And let's become the tree of life because the tree of life, as pointed out by Charles Fillmore, is that essence of life that, that has a main trunk and so many branches and channels in our bodies and our being. And let's, if, if, you, if you are sitting comfortably, put your feet on the ground and feel like you have a root that goes deep into the earth, drawing forth the nourishment of the earth, and that you have branches, spiritual branches that move through you, out your fingertips, out the crown of your head, and you draw forth the energies and the wisdom and the creative power of the heavens. You are the Invincible Christ. Ah, I'll try that again. I behold the Christ in you. Hear the life of God I see. I can see a great peace too. I can see you whole and free. Namaste. 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 Namaste.
and to know the truth of that. I invite you to say these affirmations gently, quietly in yourself. I'll say them, I'll say it once and then we can say it together. I am the Christ together. I am the Christ. I am life together. I am life. I am peace together. I am peace. I am whole and free together. I am whole and free. I am, I am, I am. And take a deep breath. I am the Christ. I am life. I am peace. I am whole and free. And so it is. Amen. And amen. Thank you. And um, excuse the little bit of roughness on the flute. I just created this piece. <laughs> I'm still, wow. This is my first time out with it. So, so um, yeah, good to be with you. And April, um, do we, are we, do we need a song now to lead us into our next part um do you want to take down your share screen uh oh yes thank you i will do that all right so let me find ah there we go well i'm looking for the controls that i have a new share but i don't have a new share um there you go thank you <laughs> thank you for your help all okay. right 
All right. So um, let me try that again on my flute and see if I can get the melody, because that's the melody of what we'll be singing together. Now, this is the note, the tricky note. Uh-huh. There we go. All right. There it is. Never mind the flute. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, I must have my fingering wrong. Yeah. Try it again. Thank you for being with me while I practice that out for the first time. Uh, here's how it goes. Uh, it occurred to me in contemplating the invincible spirit that we are both Christ and we are both Atman and whatever other name that we have for it in the different religions. And one of the things that is, has become very popular in unity is the greeting namaste. And I know that ever since before I was born, we've been saying namaste in unity in, in the phrase, I behold the Christ in you. Uh, so I put the two together as a song and we're going to do it a cappella a little bit. And, uh, and I would like you to do this part of the chant. I'll do it and then we can do it together and then we'll go through the song. Namaste, 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 namaste. You got that? Let's do that together. Namaste, 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 namaste. And here are the verses. I behold the Christ in you. Hear the life of God I see. I can see a great peace too. I can see you whole and free together. Namaste, 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 namaste. Namaste, namaste, namaste. I behold the Christ in you. I can see this as you walk. I see this in all you do. I can see this as you talk together. Namaste, 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 namaste. I behold God's love expressed. 
I can see you filled with power. I can see you ever blessed. See Christ in you hour by hour. Together. Namaste. 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 I behold the Christ in you. I can see that perfect one led by God in all you do. I can see God's work is done. Namaste, 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 namaste. One more time. Namaste, namaste. Namaste, 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 very softly, namaste, namaste, om shanti shanti shanti. Amen. And there we are.